Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, I've discovered that I haven't done a video on how to use Topaz Labs Photo AI as a plugin in Lightroom Classic in quite some time. As a matter of fact, I believe the last time I did a video demonstrating how to use it as a plugin in Lightroom Classic, we were using version 2 of Photo AI. They're now up to version 3.6.2. So on today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Topaz Labs Photo AI as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. We're going to be working on this image. This is a RAW file and it is not edited at all. I'll click on the reset button here just to prove that there's no edits done to it at all. I recommend that you remove noise as early in your workflow as possible. That usually will give you the best results. I'm going to take this totally unedited image and send it into Photo AI and remove noise right away. And it does have a considerable amount of noise. You'll notice that I shot it with an ISO of 800. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that there is uh, quite a bit of noise in this image. So I'm going to use Photo AI to remove the noise and maybe sharpen the gorilla as well. Now, to send an image from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI, you need to go up to File then down to Plugin Extras, and then at the very bottom of this menu, you'll see that there's an option Process with Topaz Photo AI. And it will take this RAW file, and it will open it up into Photo AI. And what it's going to do is it's going to do something called Autopilot. You can see it was happening over here on the right-hand side. And it determines what the image needs. Now, for all RAW files, it will automatically add RAW Denoise. So you can see RAW Denoise was happening, or was added, I should say. and it will use auto settings and you could tell it's auto settings because they'll have little dots next to them. So you see raw normal doesn't have a dot, but it chose raw strong and it has that little dot. Then you'll see these little green dots next to strength, minor to blur and remove large grain. Those are all auto settings for the sliders. If I move a slider, say strength off auto settings, it will hollow out that little dot and that's showing us that we're no longer using an auto setting for this specific slider. And you'll see there's a line here. That's the auto setting. You could move it back to that line or just double click on it to go back to the auto setting. Now, as far as autopilot and the auto settings are concerned, my experience is they work very well. You'll notice on this image, it removed the noise beautifully. If I go down here to this little eyeball, I could click on it to show you a before and then click on it again to show you an after. So this is before, after. I also have the option to have a side-by-side -side view. You can see the before on the left, after on the right. I could just click on the image to drag it around or I could go to the navigator window and move the box around. I like to get like a part of the main subject and part of the background in the, in the field of view so I could see what it did and you could see that it did a great job. There's also a split screen view and that will give you this line that you can move. There's before and after, before, after. And that's that. Now we also could have, um, you know, more fit to screen by zooming out. When you do that, it will have to re-render. You can see in the lower left hand corner, there's a progress bar. So whenever you kind of move things around or zoom in or zoom out, it will often have to re-render. But you can see with uh, right out of the box, um, with the autopilot settings, I believe it did a really good job. But, by all, you know, it doesn't always, though. Sometimes you could dial it in better yourself. So don't be afraid to try raw normal. And let's say in this case, and again, you have to let it render. And then you could come in and, you know, move the sliders around. Um, zoom in with the slider so you could see what it's doing. You can see it did a really good job either way. Now, one thing about raw denoise, I mentioned that it will always be added to raw files and you can't remove it. Uh, you'll notice that there's no like minus button here or anything to remove it. If you don't like what raw denoise did, um, you could zero out all the sliders, but I really don't see why you would want to do that. The reason why you're probably bringing an image into Photo AI is to remove noise. Now, there are some instances, though, where you might want to just sharpen an image. So you bring an image into Photo AI to sharpen it, or maybe you have a heavily cropped image and you want to um, use Photo AI to upscale the image because if you have a heavily cropped image, uh, you won't be able to get a large print from it. So you're going to upscale it to get a higher 
resolution image so that you could get a larger print from it. Obviously, um, you could bring it into Photo AI to do that. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you could do in Photo AI, actually. And um, what, with this image, Autopilot determined it just needed noise removed. If it determined that, let's say, it needed to have the subject sharpened as well, we'd have a recommendation down here telling us to do it. Now, it's just saying these are suggestions. How you know it would know it's a recommendation is, again, it would have kind of a dot next to it telling us you may want to do this as well. Now, for this specific image, let's just say I want to sharpen the subject. So I'll click on Sharpen, and it will add Sharpen here. And you'll notice when I hover over Sharpen, I could remove it. It has the X there. And as I mentioned before, you cannot remove raw denoise. Now, it did sharpen the subject, and you want to kind of make sure whenever you do this that it actually did select the subject. To do that, just hover over the word subject, and you'll see the red overlay appear. And you'll notice that the red overlay um, has the subject, but it also caught part of the background over the gorilla's right shoulder. So I'm going to have to fix that. But before I do, I just want to mention that there are a number of different AI models for Sharpen, whereas with Raw Denoise, there were only two AI models. If I go up to Raw Denoise, there's Raw Normal and Raw Strong. With Sharpen, you can see that there's a lot of different AI models. And because autopilot determined you really didn't need sharpening done. It's not giving us any auto settings here or recommendations. So you, you could go through these one by one, see which one works better. The sliders will cha change depending on what, um, what uh, model you're using. You could see, for example, Strong just has a single slider. Lens Blur version 2, if it will go to it, has two sliders. Natural, when I go to that, that has two sliders. So let's just say for the sake of this argument that standard is what we want. Uh, so we'll use that. But I mentioned that it over-selected. If I go back and show you the uh, overlay or the mask, you could see that it has part of that background. Well, you can modify this. Click on the word subject and you'll open up the um, controls to modify the mask. You'll notice here there's a couple different ways we could do it. We could use a regular brush, which is what I have, and by default it's on the minus brush, and I could come in and get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key to make it larger, smaller brush, left bracket key, and I could come in and just paint like that. There's also a super pixel brush, and what this brush does is it will look at the tone, texture, and color directly under where you're clicking. And it will only modify the masks, met the mask where it's over similar tone, texture, and color. So you probably want to use this when you're around edges. So you could come in and get it so it comes right up to the edge of the gorilla. Then the other option we have, um, if I go up here to type, is object selection. Now this just selects the object, which it did to begin with, and we noticed it didn't do that great of a job. So I'll stay with this super pixel brush and I'll just come in here and modify it. So that's a little tighter onto the gorilla and not grabbing that background at all. Part of his fur there, if I want to add to it, then come over here and get a plus brush and then you could come in and add to it like that. There, so that's it. That's just how you could modify the mask. When you're satisfied that you modified the mask properly, come back up here and click on controls and you could readjust things. But I think this overall looks pretty good. There's before and there's after before. After, and remember, this was an unedited RAW file. Now, there are, you know, a lot of things you could do besides sharpening and noise reduction in Photo AI. If I click on add enhancements, you'll see that there is denoise, which is different than raw denoise. It does remove noise, but it has other options there, and it's meant to be used on non-raw files. In this case here, I don't need to do it. There's sharpen, which I just did. There's adjust lighting, which 
uh, analyzes the image for poor lighting, then changes brightness contrast to create vivid images. Now, I never use this because I'm editing in Lightroom Classic, so I prefer to just do my editing there. I don't need to have AI adjust the lighting for me. You could do balance color. That's similar. It uses AI to balance the color. Again, I'm going to edit in Lightroom Classic, so I don't need to do that. Now, what you may find is when you do sharpening, if there are people in the scene, their face will tend to look unrealistic. You could fix that with Recover Faces. Also, what you may find is if you upscale an image that you cropped heavily and that scene has text in it, like a sign or, or something like that, the text will look garbled. Well, you could fix and preserve the text here. And then I mentioned, of course, you could upscale the image. And again, wildlife photographers probably use this the most because it always seems that that animal, that wild animal, is just a little too far away and you don't have a long enough lens. So you're going to crop in to make a more dramatic looking image. And you cropped away so many pixels, the best you could maybe print from it is 5 by 7 but you want to print you know, a 20 by 24 Well, use upscale to intelligently upscale the image so that you could then produce that larger print. Now, when you're satisfied and you're totally done in Photo AI, just come here and click Export to Lightroom Classic, and you can see that it's doing the export. It's going to save it as a RAW file. It was a Nikon RAW file to begin with. It's going to save it as a DNG file. Uh, let me open up the film strip. Let me click there and then open up the film strip. Took me a little while. I have a new computer and the keyboard's different and it takes me a while to figure out where things are. So uh, we're going to compare them. But before I compare them, let's uh, do an edit. All right. So I'm going to do the edit. This is the noise reduced image. Oh no, this is the noisy image. I'm sorry. Here's the noise reduced image. So let me do an edit very quickly on this. Uh, let me bring highlights in. Up up shadows just a little bit. I'm going to get a white point by holding the option key on my Mac. It's alt key on a PC. And moving the slider to the right, I see some color come through. That means I'm clipping the highlights. I'll just back that off to that color dissipates, or mostly dissipates. Same thing for black, so I'll hold that Alt Option key and I get a white screen this time. I'll go to the left till I see some color come through. That means I'm crushing the shadows. And I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit, not that much. And uh, let's just, you know, make it quick. And we'll add some texture and clarity. And maybe we'll just make it a little bit brighter as well. Okay, so there's a quick edit I did on this image. Now let's click on the other image and let's just click previous over here on the right and we'll take all those edits and copy them to this image as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to view and we're going to lock the zoom position so that when I zoom in like this, that when I click between the images, it won't move. So here is the edited image and here is the un unedited image. And then when I say edited, I meant the noise reduced sharpened image. So here's the image that I did in Photo AI. And here is the image that I didn't send it to Photo AI. Now, I, in my opinion, the Photo AI image is overly sharpened. I really didn't need to sharpen it in Photo AI. I was just doing that for demonstration purposes. But overall, I think it looks excellent. I think it did a great job. And here's the noisy image. Yeah, so. Maybe we won't zoom quite in, in quite as much. Right in here. So this is the noisy image. And here is the noise reduced image. Noisy. Noise reduced. We could close down this panel here. Give us a little more room here. All right, here's our noise reduced image. And there's the noisy image. Noise reduced. Noisy. So did a great job and really i think uh one of the so-called ai noise reduction applications is a must-have if you're a wildlife photographer for sure other types of photographers though too street photography um if you don't want grain in your shots for whatever or noise in your shots for whatever reason um landscape photography if you're often shooting in lower light situations or you don't have a tripod and you have to use a higher iso and you want to get rid of the noise it's definitely a must to have as well. So there's a lot of different situations where you'll want an intelligent application that will be able to remove the noise, not just the way we used to do it in Lightroom uh, with the non-intelligent um, noise reduction, where we just would come down here and move the luminance and color uh, noise reduction sliders and hopefully 
reduce that look of noise when in fact what we're doing is kind of losing detail when we do that and this is just a much better way so that's it thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it talk to you guys soon